today I'm talking about. Hello there, are you a real estate professional? Have you heard about the qualified business income deduction? Or are you wondering if that applies to you and your real estate? If you're a real estate professional, you have questions about the qualified business income deduction, you'll want to stay tuned and listen to this presentation. For real estate taxpayers, the IRS issued a safe harbor on which a rental real estate enterprise can be treated as a trade of business. And remember when I talk about section 199A, I'm talking about the new qualified business income deduction that has been in the media recently. What is qualified business income deduction? Well, qualified business income deduction was enacted by Congress to provide a deduction to non-corporate taxpayers of up to 20% of a qualified business income. So this is pretty significant. So that means when you, if you make $100, you only have to pay taxes on 80% of your business income. So these non-corporate taxpayers include partnerships, as corporations, sole proprietors, and qualified public traded partnership income. And now real estate professionals have been designated qualified under the safe harbor. So a safe harbor was provided for renter real estate enterprises. A real estate enterprise is defined as an interest in real property held for the production of rents. Um, it consists of interest in multiple properties. So in other words, you know, it's just not, this is not investment property. It's not in property you're buying, you know, to flip over. This is actually something you've invested in and you keep in and you actually rent it out. The interest must be held directly by you or you can own it through a district guided entity like an S corporation or partnership, but it has, you have to have direct interest in the property. You might either treat each property held for the production of rents as a separate entity, so you can take the section, not um, the 199A on every single property, or you can treat similar properties held for the production of rents as one single enterprise. But be careful here, commercial and residential real estate properties cannot be part of the same enterprise. So you can have commercial and, and, and personal, in other words, it has to be similar enterprise. So if you're doing all residential, all residentials will be part of the same enterprise as part of this to claim the deduction. And also you cannot vary the treatment. So you cannot group treatment in one year and then do individual treatment for every property you have another year, just because it serves you better. If there's no change in facts and circumstances, you have to be consistent from year to year. In addition to everything else I just said, the following requirements have to be met to qualify for the Section 199A deduction, also known as a Qualified Business Income Deduction. You must have separate books and records for each real estate, real estate enterprise. So in other words, if you're treating each real estate property as an enterprise, they must have each property must have its own set of books. Also, if you're treating similar properties as an enterprise, that enterprise, the similar properties will have its own set of books. So every single enterprise you're claiming the Qualified Business Income Deduction for must have its own set of books. For taxable years beginning prior to January 1, 2023, 250 or more hours of rental services are performed per year with respect to the rental enterprise. So you must have 250 hours per year to claim the qualified business income deduction. So you must show you're actually putting time in. However, beginning after December 21, 31, 2022, it's three of the five consecutive taxable years that end the taxable year. You must have 250 or more hours of rental services performed per year with respect to the real estate rental enterprise. In addition to keeping separate books and making sure you work at least 250 hours, you have to maintain other records such as logs, reports. This reports must document your hours of all services performed. I mean, obviously they want to make sure you're meeting that 250 hour requirement. So you should keep a log of that just in case you requested that log. Description of all services performed and date in which such services were performed. Re records are to be made available for inspection at the request of the IRS. So if the IRS says, hey, I need your record, you claim the Section 199A deduction, where are your records? They have to be made available. However, the IRS is lenient. It knows it's the first year and people probably did not know all this stuff. So they're not going to let it apply before January 1, 2019. But beginning this year, you better make sure you start keeping your records if you go to keep claiming the Section 199A or Qualified Business Income Deduction. 
So as you go to keep your log of the 250 hours, what would you consider rental services? Well, rental services is the time you spend to advertise, to rent or lease the real estate, negotiate and execute the lease, verify information contained in the tenant application, collection of the rent, your daily operation, maintenance or repair of the property, management of the real estate, purchase materials and supervision of employees and independent contractors. Those are all considered to be rental services. So anytime you spend doing any of the services counts towards your 250 hours. Rental services does not include time you spend to arrange and finance property, studying and reviewing financial statements or reports of operations, planning, managing, consulting long-term capital improvements, or construction of the long-term capital improvements, hours spent traveling to and from the real estate, those are not considered rental services. So they do not count towards your 250 hours. Also excluded from the safe harbor are real estate where the, where the taxpayer actually stays or dependent stays on the same rental property as the person they're renting to. So that doesn't apply if, you're, if you actually stay in the residence. And also if you have a triple net lease, in other words, where the, where the tenant is actually the one responsible for paying taxes, insurance, and all fees and taking care of the property, well, it doesn't apply you, you're not considered to to qualify under the safe harbor to take the qualified business income deduction finally to claim the tax return you must include a statement with your tax return the statement must state under the penalties of perjury i declare that i have examined the statement and to the best of my knowledge and belief the statement contains all the relevant facts relating to the revenue procedure and such facts are true correct and complete this must be signed and sent a loan your tax return. Like what you see? Go ahead and click the subscribe button on the very bottom of this video. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.